closer than a brother. Do you know him today? Hallelujah. It's good to see everyone back in the house of the Lord this Sunday night. Could have been anywhere doing anything, and a lot of people are, but I'm glad to see everyone back here in the house of the Lord tonight. Hey, man, if the kids would be going ahead and taking up the jug offering for the Tupelo Children's Mansion, a good cause, helping out a lot of individuals, more blessed to give than to receive. that I can bring my kid to church and train him to give. Amen. He'll live a blessed life if you can give. Amen. If they'd go ahead and put the prayer request up on the screen, we have several, several needs. Just to mention a few of them by name, let's keep remembering Sister Couples. Let's keep remembering Sister Haley. Need the Lord to keep moving there. Um, let's keep remembering Sister Karen Rogers. Even though the doctors may give bad reports or reports that are less than pleasant the Lord is still able he's still willing and he still can I believe he still will do it amen I believe he can she's actually going to if she wants to be getting ready she will come up we're going to anoint her tonight and pray for her um, let's keep remembering uh, Sister Debbie Warsham Jack Chester and Sister Jean Hopkins the Lord knows each one of these needs you know I believe that somewhere today in this world there was someone that was delivered I believe there was someone that was baptized in the name of Jesus. I believe there was someone delivered from addiction. I believe there was someone healed from cancer somewhere in this world. The Lord performed a miracle somewhere today. I believe that. Amen. If he, and he says he is no respecter of persons. If he did it yesterday, if he did it way back then, if he did it for someone else today, somewhere in this world, who's to say that he won't do it here tonight? If we could all stand, Sister Karen Rogers would be making her way up. We're going to anoint her. And if anyone else needs prayer, now is the time. This is the opportunity to come and let the ministry team, let the ministry team anoint you with oil. We will pray over you. You ain't even got to tell us the exact need. The Lord knows your need. He said, just come. Let the elders of the church, let the ministers anoint and pray over you. And, we, and he will do the work. Let's begin to pray. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If Sister Amber would be getting ready, she's going to come and sing us a special tonight. Let's worship with her. Let's see if we can create the atmosphere of praise because the Bible says he inhabits the praise of his people. Let's create that atmosphere and worship with her tonight.
that's what we want is his presence tonight. If the worship team would be making their way up. You know, if you read in the Bible, I, I can't say that David worshiped the Lord more than any other character, but I guess it's more notable in the Bible that he worshiped the Lord more than anyone else. He, he was man filled with flaws, filled with issues. He did terrible things, but the Bible says that he was a man after God's own heart because I believe he was quick to repentance and he was quick to change, but he also knew how to dance and worship before the Lord. Doesn't matter what you've done prior to coming into this building tonight. If you would just say, you know what, I, I messed up, Lord, forgive me. And then if you could just usher in that presence with praise, worship, adoration, he would not only would he forgive you of your sins, but he would deliver you out of your troubles. He would deliver you out of your problems. Hallelujah. Let's worship him. Let's get magnify him for nothing else other than he is great and deserving. Let's worship with him.
know this is not what we normally do, but I couldn't help but think. Now, the first time I ever danced was the night Brother Holdem got the Holy Ghost. That's been years ago. When I had any trouble, I thought, I'll never dance again. And I love dancing before the Lord. Always made me feel so good to worship. I love to worship. And then he was telling today about going to Holy Revival down in Louisiana, and there's one fella there that had one hand, and he was the only one that would clap. He took that stub of an arm, and he'd clap with his hand. He's the only person in there. I thought, Lord, I've got a lot to be thankful for, but I want you to know, I just showed the devil, I will dance again. I will dance. Now, has he took anything from you? Has he took stuff from you? Well, I want you to come back up here, right up here, and claim it back. I want you to take back what the devil took from you. Has he took anything from you? I want you to claim it back. Because God will give it back to you if you want it. He'll give it back to you when they sing.
what I feel in the house of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. I'm excited in this place. Hallelujah. You could be making your way back to your seats. We're going to change the order of the service here. That way we can get into the word of the Lord. Hey Amen. I'm excited about this year. I believe this year is going to be the year of conquest for the Lord. Brother Hoden preached about more than conquerors. In order to be a conqueror, you've got to have a conquest. I believe there's going to be some victory in this year. I'm excited about what I feel in this house. Hallelujah. Before we turn it over to Brother Levi, who's going to preach us the word of the Lord, we're going to, <clears throat> a few announcements. We have the sign-up sheet for the Bible readers. Is this the um, dinner? Okay, the dinner. If you've read your Bible through uh, 2018, sign up for this sheet. Do they have one for the... Okay. Um, so this is for those who have read their Bible through for 2018. If you've read your Bible through, you get a free steak dinner. Um, if you uh, have a spouse or a uh, significant other, then uh, if they haven't read their Bible through, they're welcome to come as well. They'll just have to pay for theirs. But also I have a card here that uh, I was told to read. It says, uh, all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. That was by Cecile Francis Alexander. Inside it says, so thankful that the Lord made you so thankful for your ki kindness too. <clears throat> this inscription says, thank you so much for all your prayers. <clears throat> During Marley's most difficult time, we love you all. Um, this is from the Thornburg family. Thank you. This is thanking for the prayers that we did for their granddaughter, grandchild. Um, so they wanted to write a card for uh, uh, the church thanking us. We're going to be putting this out there, and I'll turn for any of those who want to look at this and read this. But if the men of music would get ready to play a musical, we're going to turn the service over to Brother Levi. I look up to Brother Levi. I might be a little older than him, but I still look up to him because he has a connection with the Lord, very powerful connection with the Lord. I, I, I'm always amazed at every time he preaches because he can open the word and read it and interpret it to me in a way that I've never seen it before. And he, and he can break the word to me that it might help me. Hey Amen. I love him, Brother Levi. I'm grateful and counted a blessing to be able to come to church with him and to be one of the young ministers right beside him. Hey Amen. And I believe that he has a word for us tonight. I believe that he has, I know that he has prayed and sought the Lord for what the Lord's desire is in this house. It's up to us to receive the word and to apply it to our life. The Bible says that the word will not go out and return void. Amen. So let's let it impact us at the men of music we play. Hasn't God been good? Don't you like the way it feels in the building tonight? I like to experience the presence of the Lord. I love dancing. I love shouting. I love feeling His presence. Just getting in a place, in a moment of dancing where you're not thinking about anything else but just about how good He's been to you. I love to be 
in those places. I'm, I've, uh, I'm glad to be here tonight. I'm glad to see you here. Um, I'm glad to have this opportunity to stand before you tonight. I do not take it lightly. In the absence of my pastor, I do miss him. But the show must go on, and, uh, and hopefully uh, we're going to leave this place impacted. If I will do my job, I know the Lord will do his job, but if I'll do my job, hopefully we'll leave this place impacted. I, if I could, I would like to turn your reading uh, to the book of Ezekiel, beginning with chapter 8. I'm going to be reading verse 6, 13, and 15 there. I will be very honest with you today. I, uh, I stand before you uh, broken tonight. I stand before you with a heavy heart. I uh, love to stand behind the pulpit and, and preach something to you that will encourage you. Something that will motivate you. Something that will make you leave this place just on fire. But I don't know if I'll be able to do that tonight. I believe the Lord has different plans for us, but I'm going to obey the voice of the Lord. I'm going to obey the voice of the Lord, and this might not be what you came expecting, but the Bible teaches me that obedience is better than sacrifice, so I will be obedient to the voice of the Lord tonight. Verse 6 reads, And he said, Furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do, even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here? that I should go far off from my sanctuary. But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. Verse 13 says, He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Verse 15 says, Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. Mark chapter 7 verse 6 says, He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, that is as written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Let us pray today. God, we love you. We exalt you in your house. We felt your presence. We've experienced your power. And God, now I pray that you would anoint my lips of clay to speak your word. I pray every heart and mind would be anointed in this place tonight, God. That your word would go forth with power. That it would go forth with such an anointing. That every soul in this building would be stirred. And they would be moved by your powerful and your mighty word, God. Lord, we'll give you the glory, the praise, and the honor for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated in Jesus' name. So uh, we find here that Ezekiel is caught up in a vision. He's caught up in a vision. The Lord is allowing him to see some things that nobody else can quite see. Ezekiel chapter 1 says, 8 and 1 says, And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. Is it a coincidence that he was surrounded by the elders as the hand of the Lord fell upon him? I will tell you, if you will surround yourself with people of God, and if you will surround yourself and put yourself in a place that is surrounded by God, he will let you see mighty things that cannot be seen with the physical eye. Verse 2 says, then I beheld, and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his loins even downward, fire, and from his loins even upward, as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. And he put forth the form of a hand, and he took me by the lock of mine head, and the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven, and he brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate, that looketh toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy. So the first thing that he allows Ezekiel to see is the door of the inner gate. And at the door of the inner gate, there was an idol there. Now, 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 now understand here, we are in Jerusalem. We're in God's country. We're in uh, amidst the people that had been brought out of the land of Egypt. 
They had been fed and provided for with a mighty hand in the wilderness. They had been brought into the promised land. But yet at the inner gate, there was an idol there. And we know that in the Ten Commandments, the Bible teaches us that there sh- thou shalt have no other gods before thee. This was the first thing that he let Ezekiel see. Chapter 8, beginning with verse 7 says, And he brought me to the door of the court. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. And he said unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in, and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and I saw and behold every form of creeping things. An abominable beast and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. These was not 70 murderers. These were not 70 people that had never met God before. But these were elders of the ancient house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Zaniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. So not only did he allow him to see these 70 men, but he allowed him to pinpoint one man that was there. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery. For they say, the Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. Do not think that the Lord cannot see you. I want to preach with a title tonight, The Closer, The Greater. The closer, the greater. As he was seeing these 70 men and one of them, he named by name, they thought that they were in the darkness. They thought that nobody else could see them, but the eyes of the Lord were upon them. I feel like telling somebody in this house tonight, you've been doing things in the darkness and you think that nobody can see them. Oh, but God will reveal those things if you keep continuing in the things that you're doing. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Do not think that you can do things behind God's back and behind the man of God's back and even behind your family's back and they will not be revealed. But God said everything that's done in darkness, I will bring it to light. They said the Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. So the second thing, this was the second thing that the Lord let Ezekiel see. The elders of the house of the Israel were alone in the darkness, worshiping idols. And Ezekiel names one of them by name. I take you to the third thing. Just hang with me. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was towards the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. This was the door of the gate of the Lord's house. You notice with me today that they started at the gate, but now they're approaching the Lord's house. And as he's approaching the Lord's house, he said, you think that was bad? I'm about to show you a greater abomination. Isn't it ironic that the closer he stepped to the Lord's house, the greater abominations were there. These women were sitting at the gate weeping for Tammuz. Now they were praying. Tammuz was a Sumerian fertility god similar to the Greek god Adonis. They were sitting right outside God's gate praying to this abominable god because they couldn't get pregnant. Now why is it that when we cannot accomplish things in our own hands, we will not just put them in God's hands, but we seek every other direction trying to get what we need. Yes, I'm for physicians. Yes, I'm for every other form of of doctors and all these things. But sometimes why don't you just ask God for what you need? Sometimes why don't you just get on your knees and say, God, I want this to happen for me and I know you're the man for the job. But no, they sat there weeping, praying unto a God that could not hear them, a false God. 
This was the third thing, the door of the gate of the Lord's house. Here's the fourth thing. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east, and they worshiped the sun toward the east. These men were so close to the house of the Lord, but yet uh, the Bible says they had their backs to the house of the Lord and they were facing the sun, worshiping the sun. Who in this place has turned their back to the Lord? Who in this place has turned their back to the house of the Lord? You want to just get close enough uh, to be there so everybody said, well, he didn't miss this Sunday or he didn't miss this Wednesday, but yet your heart is turned from the Lord. I know I'm preaching to somebody in this house. I know God did not give me this for no reason, but somebody in this building, if you do not get your life straight, God is about to reveal everything that you've been doing. I wish you'd hear me. He let Ezekiel see some things that nobody else could see. And don't think that that man of God, which is not present here tonight, God will not open his eyes and let him see everything that you've been doing. Because he'll do it. I know that's hard preaching tonight. I wish I could uplift you. But somebody in this place, you need to hear me tonight. I want your soul to be saved. I want you to enter into the pearly gates. And if you're doing abominable things, you're not going to go there. The closer, the greater. The closer to the church, the greater the abominations. The closer to the church, uh, the greater the abominations. Uh, God forbid we live in a society uh, where people see more abominable things uh, on their way to church than they see on the way to the strip club, uh, than they see on the way to the bar, or they see on the way to the ball game. God forbid. This is a holy place. This is a place of reverence. God said, I'm gonna put my name there, and I'm gonna dwell there, and it's gonna be holy. This is a holy place. This is not just a place for a daycare. This is not just a place where we fellowship and eat, but this is the presence of the Almighty God. We've got to reverence the house. Why is it that the people God has done the most for is the people that are the least committed to Him? We need some people that will realize what God has brought you through and quit playing games with him. Quit saying that you are going to live halfway on the fence and maybe one day you'll decide to serve him. But no, no, no. We need a people in this church that are going to be committed. I'm going to tell you this. I'd rather have a newcomer in here full of zeal and full of fire than a person that's been here 15 years and is as dead as a rock. Don't look at nobody negatively because they come in here and they don't look like you. The problem is you're just mad because they got more zeal than you do. You're just mad because they got more fire than you do. That ain't popular preaching, but it's good anyway. We have got to, to be a people that learns to be committed to God. When people get closer to the church, they shouldn't see greater abominations. They shouldn't see greater sin. But the closer they get to the church, I want them to see greater miracles. The closer they get to the church, I want them to see greater healings. The closer they get to the church, I want them to see greater deliverances. We need greater supernatural encounters. We need greater moves of God. He said, we are a city that's set on a hill. We are the light of the world. We're the salt of the earth. We've got to be different. Guys, this is a new year. God has amazing things for this church. But if you don't want to get on board, I just wish you would get off the train because we're moving forward. I don't want you to slow the train down and I promise you, I'll hold on you as long as I can. But if you're not gonna help me, you just might as well get off because we're going forward. 
This church is going places. We're going to reach the loss. We're going to see revival. We're going to see a move of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. It saddens me deeply. I, I wept. I wept. I wept so much before I came up here. I wept because I'm like, God, do you really want me to preach this? These people are expecting something else. They're expecting something else. But I knew that God had a message for somebody in this house. Uh, this might be your last service. Uh, this might be the last, last time you step in an apostolic church. Uh, and I don't want, I don't want it sugar-coated. Uh, I don't want it to go the way you want it to go. But I want it to prick you right in the heart. Uh, when I when you leave this place, I want you to look back and say, Man, he's just stepped on my toes. Uh, he's reading my notes. Uh, he must be peeking in my window at night uh, because I have been doing some things. That I shouldn't be doing. What have you been doing in the darkness? What have you been doing behind closed doors? What have you been doing late at night when everybody else is asleep and you're up? Oh, God forbid. God forbid. It talks about throughout this whole thing, generally uh, about half of these people were either leaders in the church. They were ancient men, people that knew better. If our leadership is not full of the Holy Ghost, if our leadership is not full of, full of power and full of anointing, I'm telling you guys, if you're going to be in leadership, if you're going to be a greeter, if you're going to be an usher, let me beg you today to commit yourself to God. You've got to commit yourself to the Lord. I want greater for this church. I want deeper for this church. I believe God wants us to expand. I believe this building is going to be expanded. I believe we're going to have spiritual growth and physical growth. But for us to do that, it's going to take some hard-nosed preaching. It's going to take somebody stepping on our toes. It's going to take somebody to make us better. And God forbid... Out of the 70 men, you're the one that God shows your face to the pastor. God forbid. He didn't say he showed all the other people's faces to him, but he did show that one face. God forbid. But I'm telling you, God will do it. He has placed our pastor as the shepherd of this church. And do not think for a minute that he will not reveal the things that you're doing. We've got to move forward. We've got to find a place of repentance. I told my Sunday school class this morning that the greatest start to the journey with God, the first step, and I asked, I said, what is it? What, what, is the, what is the first step in a relationship with God? And Destiny back here, she got it, hit it right on the head. Repentance. Repentance. If we want a deeper start with the Lord this year, it's going to take some Repentance. It's going to take removing some of those things out of our lives that's been holding us back for so long. Listen, I don't care if you've been dealing with something for months or even weeks. I come to tell you tonight, if you lay it down, God will take it from you. I don't care if it's something that you're facing mentally or if it's something that you're facing physically. I don't care how long you have had the addiction, how long you've been doing what you're doing. But God said if you'll find a place to repent tonight, all those things are going to go away and he's going to let you step into a new realm in your life. It starts with repentance. And so I pray tonight and my main purpose for this tonight is to bring your attention to what you have been doing. Don't you hate it when somebody calls you out on something? I hate that. I mean, some people really aren't, you know, okay, I ain't, ain't going to say that. Anyway, I hate being called out on things. And I know because my face gets red and I'm like, uh, you know, I, I start stuttering. But sometimes it's good to get called out on things because some people, when they get embarrassed, they actually change. 
That's me. When I get embarrassed, I change. And so I hope I embarrass some of you tonight. I hope your face is red when I was talking about doing things in darkness because you knew exactly what I was talking about. But I will give you good news tonight. The Lord didn't tell me who it was. So you're in good shape. You're in good shape tonight. But believe me, believe me, I would hate it. And, and this is what I love about God is that you can come into a service and you can be one out of like 200 people. And the preacher will get up and he'll start preaching. And you're like, has he been watching me? Because he's talking about exactly what I've been doing. Exactly what I've been going through. But that's the beautiful thing about God. Is that he'll throw everybody else out of the way for one service. So he can look dead at you and say, I got more for you. I got more for you. I got more for you. And it's during those times you're like, God really does care for me. God really does want greater for me. He does have greater on the horizon for me. Stand with me tonight, church. I know I haven't been long, but you dance most of my time away. That's all right. I'm not complaining. My voice don't hold up anyway. But as we close this service tonight, all laughing aside, all those things out of the way, if you could, look at yourself for just a minute. What have you been doing in the darkness? What have you been doing behind closed doors? Now I know your spouse don't have to know it. Your father, your mother don't have to know it. Because I, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Somebody needs to come tonight. Somebody needs to come. I don't know how long you've been facing it. I don't know how long you've been dealing with it. Frankly, I don't care. I've had some things in my life that have tormented me. But when I laid them down. Oh, oh the freedom, Brother Hold'em. The freedom when I laid them down. We need a time of repentance. Everybody search their hearts. God wants to move.